Hey there, Mike S. Miller here, 28-year veteran of the comic book industry, best known for my work on Injustice Gods Among Us and Game of Thrones covers, here to teach you how to draw comics like a pro. On today's astonishing episode of How to Draw Comics Like a Pro, I'm going to teach you what you need to draw comics like a pro. Well, at least like this pro. All pros use different tools. You know, some people use regular pencils, some people use blue pencils, some people use tablets and Photoshop or Procreate. I'm going to show you what I do. There's other guys out there. That's why there's so many uh, channels out there trying to teach you how to draw and everybody has their own techniques. I'm going to show you what I do and I hope you like it. So let's do it. All right, here we go. All you would be and want to be artists out there in the world. You want to be a, be a pro? You want to draw like a professional? Well, you're going to need professional tools. The first thing you're going to need is a desk, some sort of a desk. Ideally, you want a desk that uh, it is a drafting table or something that allows you to have some sort of an incline because when you're a pro, you're working 8, 10, 12, 24 hours a day. And uh, boy, if you're working on a flat surface desk, your back is going to pay for it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but trust me, eventually you will want to die. Second thing you're going to need, and what I have laid out here before me, is Bristol board. Artists, we, we draw on Bristol board. We draw primarily on 11 by 17. There are guys that have used double up size. There are guys that have used smaller size. But the industry standard for Bristol board is 11 by 17 pre-printed usually with these wonderful wonderful lines all around all the way around it when you work at marvel or dc as a professional they will send you board and they'll send you different kind of uh textures you can get smooth you can get vellum you can get rough surface i like the smooth surface paper here i'll show you let me open this up for you it's got a nice nice texture to it it's not quite glass smooth but it, it 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 has a little tiny bit of tooth to it i don't like too much tooth because i i ink with a brush and also it just i don't know it's just drawing on that super smooth paper just i don't know it irritates me so i don't do it personal preference obviously otherwise they wouldn't make all the different varieties but if i were you i would start with the smooth try that out and i think all of the different pre-printed uh, comic book papers like this one here is from Strathmore. Like I said, if you work for Marvel DC, it'll say Marvel DC, Devil's Do, Dynamite, Boom, whatever the company is, they make their own paper. This is Strathmore, just comes fresh out the box. All right, and what you want from these lines, you're like, why are all those lines all over the place on this paper? Because you have to know where to put your artwork. It's very important that you don't draw. See, comic books are printed about two thirds size of the actual page, and there's an industry standard. So when you buy these pads of paper, uh, make sure you pay attention. Don't draw all the way to the edge of the paper. First of all, it's a waste of time. Second of all, uh, it just looks neater if you if you actually do follow along these lines. The outer, outer, outer line, the s big solid line here, that's sort of the edge of where you want to go. Unless you're like, you know, doing a double page spread and you're sticking these pages together. Then you got to kind of fudge the rules a little bit. But let's just stick to the regular single page for now. Uh, this dot dash line that goes all the way around is called the trim line. This you want to draw out of if you're doing something of a bleed. Let me show you what a bleed page looks like. So, all right, here's a, good, here's a good example of a bleed page where the art just bleeds right off of the page, onto the edge, out of the edge, and then they just cut the art right there. Well, that's that trim line right there. So if you wanna draw something, like in my pages, I usually do a panel or two that'll bleed out, and then the rest of the panels will be within the borderline of the page. So that is the trim line. And again, these this borderline here, that is this this consistent dash line here on the inside. This I believe is nine by 14 inches, something around there. And this is where you wanna maintain all of your, what you wanna consider your important art. Again, stuff out here, there, there's another reason for this, this quote unquote important art gap is that <clears throat> comic books, when they're saddle stitched like a regular comic book, they, uh, they bend in right here, right? 
So you ever you ever get to one of these big double page spreads? Let me see if I even have a double page spread in here. You ever get to one of these big double page spreads and you look at it and you're like, oh, I want to see what's happening right in the middle of that crack. I didn't do any double page spreads. <laughs> and you're like, you want to see and you're trying to bend it over and it's like, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. So that's why this line is here. It is for the important art. It's where you want to keep uh, it's a good it's a good guideline for where you want to put your panel borders and it's a good line guideline for you know where you want to leave space for for word balloons and whatnot so Strathmore that's what I'm using that Canon makes paper but obviously this one is recommended by sequential art professionals and award-winning artists everywhere that's me uh, no awards but yes 28 year veteran of the comic book industry I think I deserve a little shout out all right let's go to what do you need after you have paper well I think you need a pencil of some sort now again this is a Bic I don't use these <laughs> uh, this is just your standard Bic my my son was doing his homework so 0.9 millimeter but it's pence it's a pencil there's there's a whole range of pencils you can use but like I said I'm here to teach you what I use if you want to replicate my tool set then uh, then here we go what I actually use is Pentel 0.5 millimeter blue why blue why blue and obviously a lead holder which uh, I use a graph gear uh, 0.5 also by Pentel graph gear 500 so this is this is how you use these if you've never used a mechanical pencil before and you need to be treated like a child or perhaps you are a child. Hi. Hi. I love kids. Uh, you just take the back of that out like that. You pop a couple of these bad boys. It's like you're getting cigarettes out of a... Oh, wait. No, no, no. no. Cigarettes bad. Don't smoke, kid. You pull a couple of these bad boys out. You just drop them in the back hole here. Bloop. And then you just stick the eraser back in. And you put that cap back on. And then clickety-clue clickety-boo you're good good to go good to go solo why blue because when you're using blue lead and you're using blue crop crop lines after you're done inking sorry that's a whole nother step you draw it in the blue line and then you ink it in black ink and then you scan it in right and then if you have Photoshop where you're doing all of your, or you're, you hire somebody else to do this. I don't know how you want to do it, but you, you, uh, you use Photoshop to just select all of the blues and they vanish. It's like magic. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I do want to make a point real quick. The blue lead, it's not lead. It's a clay, right? So if you're drawing here, right, you don't want to push down too hard because if I push down really hard and then I'm like, oh, crud I didn't want to do that and then you grab one of the next tool in the kit the handy dandy Stedler eraser and then you go to erase it the clay doesn't come up as well as graphite does so I'm not telling anyone not to draw with graphite graphite obviously is a uh, tried and true but um, you see that it still leaves a little bit of the blue on the paper so draw lightly with the blue um, you can you can darken it obviously the harder you push the darker it's gonna get and if you you're cemented your ideas in stone and you need some details that are a little darker you know go to town I'm not gonna tell you what to do I'm just gonna make suggestions here what do we got next what do we got next all right yeah obviously the eraser the eraser the eraser everyone knows what an eraser is it's uh, I use the Mars Mars plastic that's upside down. I use Mars plastic eraser. I love the texture of these these white rubber, uh, I guess plastic, whatever. Uh, obviously, you can see the blue comes up off the off the page <laughs> onto the eraser. But um, yeah, it's it's a smooth eraser. It's not. It doesn't have the like. You ever use those pink erasers? And they they're just for some reason they feel like grittier. They feel like they're gonna tear your paper into little shreds. And uh, the Mars plastic doesn't. It's it really just, I could do this all day. All day, I could just erase this spot and it would never, it would never damage the paper itself. Some people use those 
horrible, horrible, kneaded, gray. Ugh, I hate those things. But, you know, whatever. You, you do you. I'm not telling you what to do here. I'm just telling you what I do. What else do you need? What else do you need? Oh my gosh. Here it is. Sorry if that grosses you out. You're supposed to do that. Although, uh, I watched I watched a How They Make It video on these things. And and the people at the factory do that. So it's like, when you, when you do this, it's like you've got somebody else's factory spit in your mouth. Uh, Sorry. Blech. This is going to gross me out. Anyways, brush, brush, brush. The brush of choice for most professional inkers in the comics world is the Kolinsky Sable. Uh, this is a Raphael Kolinsky from France. This is the size 3. You can get them in all kinds of sizes. Uh, I think the size 3 is a good average. You can go bigger as long as the quality is on point, which it's supposed to be. Raphael is really pretty good uh, about quality control. Windsor Newton also makes a Kalinsky Sable brush. Quality control, in my experience, a little less so than Raphael. I might have to buy uh, three or four uh, Windsor Newtons in order to get. That's why in the old days, I used to go to the, I used to be able to go to the art store and test all of their brushes. Right, they'd give you a little bit of test paper, and you can just test and try to get. And then you'd go, okay, well this this is the one I want because this one's got the great point on it. But now, not so much, not so much. They've they've had some issues with the Kalinsky sable for some reason. But the there's a lie in your head, and the lie is is you thinking, the smaller the brush I have, the finer the point I can get. No, no. I can get this, I believe, is a size 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, can you see how that's a little bit longer? And then that's what I, this is, I also do this. I put some double-sided tape on here, and then I wrap it with some, some duct so that I can get a nice for, firm grip on it. Because gripping this teeny, teeny, tiny little thing can get a little bit tedious. So um, do something. Uh, some people wrap these. I've, I've done a, a number of... Uh, Look, in the past, I've done a sort of a a, th uh, a thread wrap, right? This is a um, packing string, and I did a kind of a cool thing like that. I've used mustache duct tape. <laughs> I've ju I've used just straight straight duct tape. This is just duct tape wrapped around and around and around. around. So um, whatever makes you comfortable, whatever makes your grip comfortable, do that. Hey, if you if you like just using the brush by itself, go with God. But uh, like I, my point is that you can use a larger brush and if the quality of the brush is on point you can get just as fine a line as you can with a number one or a number two you can use a number four you can use a number five and if the quality is there you can get just as fine a line and what you'll find is you're not constantly dipping your brush so you can get a nice perfect perfectly fine line and It'll last you much longer because the, the the barrel fills with ink and you can just it go and go and go and go and go without dipping. Now, what I have been using, frankly, because I just haven't gotten around to getting an, uh, uh, some new Kalinsky brushes and because this was recommended to me by my friend Walden Wong, uh, another industry veteran inker, I've been using these little suckers. This is a Pentel little like I think it's a six dollar like those Kalinsky Sables can run up to thirty forty dollars a pop this is <laughs> this is I think you can get these four to six dollars and they're little machine made plastic cheapies a, it, it does have the teeny tiny little brush line so it, it does get a little tedious dipping and dipping and dipping what you don't want to do is actually this is designed because it's a watercolor brush it's not actually an ink brush it's designed for you to fill this body with water and then go to town on watercolors do not fill this with ink whatever you do you might put a couple drops of water in there so that the back of the bristles stay moist but oh boy you don't want to fill out with water because if you do it you that the value of that teeny tiny tip gets lost completely because th this thing will just 
max out with with moisture and then you'll go to put it on the on the on the paper and no you won't get a hair's breadth you'll get like a a millimeter thick bead of ink <laughs> and then you'll be like ah! and throw your page away the next tool in my arsenal the quill the quill the body of this quill is actually a burnisher holder it's a two millimeter burnisher holder i can uncheck it here and uh pull the nib out and you can see you can see here right this is actually designed for burnishing if you don't know what that is maybe i'll do another video but if you're going to look for one look for a burnisher holder and so the quill i have in here is actually it's a japanese quill called a zebra maru otherwise known as a mapping quill so i got these from japan but you can get them on amazon i believe and they are tempered steel and they're very very rigid so you can get very fine lines however because they are tempered steel and quite rigid you can't they don't have the flex of a non-tempered quill uh the crow quill 102 which is an american made quill has a good amount of flex to it i don't actually have well i do have some here but they're all used uh, I have the Japanese equivalent here. It looks more like it is a shorter nib. You see that? Uh, it does not have that sort of burnt metal color. That's how you know it's not tempered. Uh, and it does have a, quite a give, uh, quite a bit more give to it. Uh, so you can get some nice, nice uh, lines there. Another quill I have been using as of late is the SL Comic Pen. Again from Japan uh, you might, might you might google that and try to find it but this is it's not quite as fine a line it is quite rigid because it's a very thick thick metal you can see it's uh it's it's bigger broader and it gives you a very consi a, a thicker but a consistent line it does doesn't have much give at all so you're not using this to try to get uh, get some beautiful line weight or anything but it's good for certain textures and certain uh, certain consistency of line, places where you need consistency of line. So next up, what is next up? Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the pen. <laughs> yes, it's a pen, ladies and gentlemen. Now these are these are um, this one's a one millimeter. This is a 0.3 millimeter. These are called Copic multiliners. These are water fast, waterproof pigment proof which means that you can you can draw with these and then if you want to use alcohol based color coloring tools like uh, prismacolors or or copic colors then the these pens won't bleed with this ink which is fantastic if you're doing small illustrations or or coloring stuff for whatever reason now these are also very important if you want to do things like this right this is another necessary artistic tool if you want to have perfect circles, perfect ellipses. Ellipses. They're called ellipses. This is a four-in-one ellipse from Picket. But what you do with the, the pens, obviously, is you, you place your ellipse where you want it. And then you just sort of... And then pull it away. And there you go. There you go. You have a nice, perfect ellipse. Not really something you can do with a quill or a brush. So uh, the pens... So I, in the back in the old days, I used to use a uh, coronal rapidographs, but wow, those take a lot and a lot, a lot of care and uh, cleaning, constant cleaning. And these will save you time. They have these are these are the disposable ones. They're, these do come in other brands. They come with uh, these are Marvi Uchida, Marvi Uchida, Uchida uh, for drawing. Uh, 0.005. This is a micron. Microns, I'm not, I used to use microns until I discovered copying multiliners. And then the feel, the feel of the micron became sort of like a dried out Copic multiliner. These are just much smoother pens. They give you a much cleaner line, I think. And again, you can use whatever you want. This is what I use. If you want to draw like a pro, you can use whatever you want. You want to draw like this pro, you use what I tell you. Also, tools, tools, tools. Like I said, you do need 
some of these ellipses. You get them in all kinds of different sizes and shapes. Well, not shapes. They're just they're ellipses, so you get different different diameters and whatnot. They can get kind of pricey, so you can either get used to just drawing things at certain degrees of angles, or you can just buy a, a crap ton of these things. Uh, what also comes in handy are French curves. Uh, you can get these, these not so expensive, and uh, when these start getting nicked and, and whatnot and uh, make it difficult for you to draw a nice clean line with uh, with the quill on it, uh, or, or you can use quills with these, mind you. Uh, you just tilt it up like this with your finger, and you just go along the edge like that. I do it. Master it. You can do it too. But what you don't want to do when you get your, your ruler out, plastic rulers are great. You can see through them while you're doing stuff. Quick pro tip for you. When you get your plastic rulers, you might notice that when you're drawing and you're inking that somehow or another plastic will pick up and transfer ink and create permanent marring on your page that you do not want. How to avoid that? Well, magic. It's magic. It's magic tape. You know magic, like scotch magic tape, the really cheap, you know, tape you use to wrap your Christmas presents. Just put a strip of that on the back and somehow or another that alleviates the entire ink transferal process. I don't know how it does it. I think it's magic. But it works, so uh, make sure you give that a shot. But my warning to you all, if you can avoid it, do not use a quill and a ruler like so. Because plastic rulers will eventually, and I don't I don't really give the warning too much about, about these because uh, if you if you get a nick or something on these, just grab another, get another one. These these are pretty cheap. But on the on the rulers, because you use rulers so much, eventually they will get imperfections in the line, right? And so those imperfections, when you're trying to do your very best, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's the last line of my thing, and I just need a perfect line, and then you you hit one of those imperfection snags, and boom, you get a splatter or a sputter, uh, and then you just want to just. No, 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 no. If you can find one, if you can find one, and I challenge you to do this, get yourself one of these. This is an Alvin ACR20 cutting ruler. This is for using X-Acto blades or, you know, razors or whatnot, because not only is it a clear plastic, not only does it have rubber grommets on the back so that it sticks on your paper without movement, it has a stainless steel edge on it that cannot be damaged. It cannot be bartered with. It cannot be reasoned with. It cannot be destroyed. It is a perfect, smooth, ah, oh, it's like silk. It's, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful, <laughs> like a tree. And so yeah, use that. Again, you can use this flat because it does have the rubber grommets on it, but be careful when you're Anytime you're using a quill, um, I would suggest using that little bit of fat at the tip of your finger, right there, as a leverage to hold your ruler, your French curve, anything up about a good half inch off the thing, and then just use that to guide your quill or your, not so much with your pens. If you're using your pens, it doesn't really matter, but the quill, yeah. The last thing you want, the very last thing you want, is to have a drop of that beautiful black ink find its suctioning vacuum way into... <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for you. I'm just going to show you what happens when you take a little bit of ink and a little bit of vacuum. Look at that. Look what happens. Now imagine you're doing a bunch of fine filigree work with your fantastic tools that I just showed you, and then you slap your ruler down and you go, no! Am I right? You don't want that on a piece of art you just spent 18 hours drawing. So listen to Uncle Mike. 
He knows what he's doing. He's a professional. Now, what kind of ink does Uncle Mike use? Please don't call me Uncle Mike. Uh, <laughs> I use Dr. P.H. Martin's. I have used various inks. I've used Windsor Newton Waterproof India. I have used Black Magic. I have used uh, Corner 3084 series. A lot of different good inks. Right now, I'm in, I've been using Dr. Martin's. I've been using Bombay and I've been using Black Star intermittently, depending on which store I go to. They like, Different stores carry different inks. So, Dr. P.H. Martin. And last, 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 but not least, for those of you who need it, for those of you who are not absolutely perfect, white out. This is Copic Opaque White. Now, it's very, very thick. So, what I do, I put a little water on the top. This is way, way, way too thick to use with a quill. But I put a little water on the top and then I dip and stir until it's the consistency of, let's say, milk. Not quite water, but just a little bit of white because a little bit of this goes a long way. I have had this forever and it looks almost like I've, I haven't even used any. So um, there's other whiteouts on the market. Uh, that's the one I've been using lately. It gives you a nice shine, it gives you a nice sheen. Um, it works pretty well even on the surface of ink. It does tend to bead a little bit if you've got too much ink laid down because it really wants to adhere to the paper more than it does to the, the carbon in the ink. So, anywho, I'm not going to teach you how to draw on this video, but I am going to teach you how to draw in upcoming videos. If you want to follow me on this little journey, then go out, get yourself some of this stuff. It's all available, I'm pretty sure, online. You could try Blix. You could try Amazon. But I'm going to come back here. I'm going to be doing some more how-to videos. I'm going to teach you how to draw heads. I'm going to teach you how to draw hands. I'm going to teach you how to draw muscle men and beautiful, sexy women. And I'm going to teach you how to draw faces and eyeballs and noses and hair and armor and weapons and... I'm going to teach you how to draw like a pro. Like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell for all notifications. All notifications. Because YouTube sucks at telling you when I've got a new video. As I mentioned a couple of times on the stream, I am a professional comic book artist. Right now, I'm doing my own comic books through crowdfunding. You can check out my, my latest endeavor at LoneStarComic.com. It'll take you to my Lone Star Comic series, an American super patriot fighting the monsters that go bump in the night. That's just a quick pitch. You can get the first comic there for free as a PDF right on the front page. So please do check that link out. It's in the description. Or, as I said, go to LoneStarComic.com. Check out my other channel, Blacklist Universe. We do a lot of live streaming there, and you can join that community and, and uh, ask me questions live as I'm streaming. And until the next video, you know, I truly believe that anybody can learn to draw. It just takes a love of craft and a tenacity to keep doing it. 10,000 hours. Well, for some people, 10,000 hours is proficiency. But anyone can learn to draw, and that includes you. So stick around, stay with me, and we'll help you learn how to draw comics like a pro. God bless you guys. Have a great day.